everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we are going to compare airbrushes. We're going to talk brands. We're going to talk features. We're going to talk what you need, what you should choose. So let's get into it. The, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. All right, airbrushes. Turns out there's quite a few of them on the market. Uh, different brands, different features, and if you're new to the whole thing, or maybe even if you've been airbrushing for a while and you're looking for an upgrade, this is the video for you. We're going to head over to the painting desk and I'm going to take you through a bunch of different airbrushes and show you how really most any of them can be used to do most of the tasks you need, but also where some of the really high-end, more expensive ones can do a few things the others can't. We're going to put them through their paces, do a few tests, see how they perform, and see what the real material differences are in their usage. This should be a lot of fun. Let's right. do it. So these are the airbrushes we're going to focus on today. Uh, we're going to look over these seven airbrushes. Uh, and as I'm talking here, you're going to see each of them pop up on the screen. But we've got the Master G23, the very sort of cheap option, the Badger Chrome, the Grex XGI3, the Iwata HPCS, the Iwata Highline CH, the Harder and Steenbeck Infinity Kiev, and uh, or Kiev, sorry, I'm not sure which the correct pronunciation is, and the Infinity CR Plus. Now, first, I want to start with just a few basic things about the airbrush. You'll notice with all my airbrushes, I have this extra fixture on the bottom. This is a quick change cap that you can use along with an extension on your hose so you can change between them easily and often, which I do because I use them for different purposes. They're very cheap. You can get them in bulk off Amazon or from USA Airbrush Supply or something like that. Now, the airbrush itself, what it consists of is most of them, the back is going to come off, of course, and then you have your needle chuck and you can take the needle out. Lots of people say you shouldn't remove the needle out of the back. You're supposed to remove it out the front, and they say that because when you slide it back into the back, you risk damaging the tip, and that is true. Um, my response is yes but it's really annoying to take it out of the front so i'm just going to be careful you do you uh, many airbrushes also have this dial on the back that you can use to control the trigger as to how far back it will go um, you can see you can go from you know full extension to lock uh, and so you'll that's often a useful tool especially if you're having trouble controlling how much backwards pressure you're applying the Highline in this case also has an airflow control on the front and some higher end airbrushes do have this airflow control. That's controlling how much air is flowing between the hose and out the tip. Now, when it comes to the cup, there are many different designs. You'll notice both of the Iwatas are roughly the same. And in this case, the Iwata does not have a removable cup. But if you look at the Master G23, there's a lot more space down in there where paint can get caught and things like that. Whereas if you look at the Grex, it's much smaller. The smaller the cup area, um, the harder it is to clean. However, with something like the Grex, you can unscrew the cup, which does make it then easier to get into that area and remove. Walking a good balance between enough space to clean it easily with a soft brush and not too much space where paint can build up or just hang out is really important. Finally, you've got your needle guard. Um, so there are two. There's the nozzle guard and the needle guard on the front. Um, the needle guard can generally come off and help you get finer lines, or you can have a tooth-like uh, needle guard as like on the Infinity. Now, we're going to start uh, with a couple different tests. So first off, the most common reason people buy an airbrush, which is just priming. Rattle cans are expensive and annoying to prime with. I prime with my airbrush for basically everything that's not terrain. And here I'm just using the Master G23 and some Pro Acryl Primer. And guess what? If your goal is just to have an airbrush to prime, something like this cheap $30 airbrush is all you need. And in fact, you'll see I'll do a lot more tasks with this over time. But if you're looking for something to just get those miniatures primed so you can get to painting, don't waste your money. Anything cheap is fine. And as a point of fact here, we're going to do the old paper test. So our next round is the paper test, wherein we're going to spray all of these and see how they operate under sort of perfect conditions when I can hold it flat and rest my hand and all of that. As you can see, the master, even though it's a 0.3 needle, does create some pretty fat lines. Now the Badger Chrome with a 0.21 millimeter needle um, can produce some pretty pretty thin lines while producing a nice smooth spray pattern. Uh, the difference in needle size, you're going to see some of these airbrushes like the Grex, the Master, and the Iwatas that I use having a 0.3 millimeter needle, whereas the Badger and the uh, Harder and Steenbeck um, having 0.2s. 
Now, there isn't really that huge of a connection between your ability to do a thin line and the needle in question. The yes, there is a difference, but it's so very small. The precision of the machining of the trigger and your ability to develop trigger control with the tool will influence your ability to do sharp thin lines much more than your than the particular needle. For example, I can do about the same thin line with the Iwata with a 0.3 millimeter needle or the high line here as I did with the Badger. And the reason for that is because uh, I've used both of these tools a great deal. I'm very comfortable with the trigger and have an established trigger control. The Harder and Steinbecks though are truly a cut above with either the 0.2 millimeter needle in the Infinity uh, Keeve or the uh, Harder and Steinbeck uh, CR Plus with the 0.15. You know, I can write my name pretty easily. I can do razor thin lines. Uh, and so eventually you will get to the point where you really do have an enhanced sense of control. And if you combine the smaller needle and nozzle with the with uh, you know your your built up muscle control over the trigger you will be able to really really become a surgeon and do some very fine lines so as you can see the grex and the master produce some pretty fat lines the the badger produce nice line you know nice thin control same with the iwata and the the harder and steenbeck coming out clearly on top now let's actually put this in practice because normally our miniatures are not pieces of paper or at least they haven't been for me since the mid 90s so now it's time to actually just do some base coating. The next most common thing we buy an airbrush for. Here again, we're gonna start with the Master G23 and I'm just gonna put some flesh tone down over black paint. We're not gonna worry about zenithals. We're not gonna do anything like that. We're just gonna get in there and we're gonna apply some paint. And as you can see, for the purposes of base coating, I can get that on no problem. So again, the cheap airbrush performs just fine. You'll see the difference here when I switch over to the Iwata HPCS for the front. Notice how because of the precision of the machining in the control, you see how much less paint is coming out at a time. Now I'm applying about the same pressure. All of these paints are thinned exactly the same. I prepared a batch and put the same one in every single, uh, every single airbrush. Uh, and I did not let them sit or anything like that. So this is the same paint, same consistency, same everything. But you notice with the Iwata, because the trigger is so much more precise, I was able to slowly build it up over time. And when you're building consecutive layers on your base coats, that's often a very, very valuable thing. The same is true of the chrome. Now, the design on the chrome is quite interesting. It has this very fat, wide open uh, cup that's very easy to clean and very flat. So I do love that design. Uh, but at the same time, it's a little bit harder and heavy to actually keep in your hand. Now, the Kiev, again, kills it at base coating. The Kiev, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to call it the the, uh, the harder and Stein, steam back. Um, just kills it at base coating, kills it at everything because I have such perfect control. And notably, that Infinity is uh, made of aluminum, so it's extremely lightweight. The next test, highlighting. Can we highlight? In other words, can we layer with the airbrush? And as you'll notice here, I've just stepped up to a light flesh, again, starting with the master, and sure, no problem. For those larger open areas on your miniatures, again, the cheap airbrush is gonna do you just fine. Didn't need to spend a lot of money, but I can. The, uh, if, if I want, slightly more control, and more ability to do a, a better job. When I move to the Iwata, you'll see again that ability to build up the paint is coming into effect. Now with the chrome, it's exactly the same. Here I'm going to work on the pants as so I'm doing the front and back of him with all four of these uh, going into round two here. And you'll notice here again, I'm able to just very gently rock the trigger. The one thing I will say for the Badger is it's heavy, but it does have very nice control overall. Um, I was able to, with, you know, sort of my highlight color here, establish something very, very gently. Now, with the uh, Infinity, uh, I'm able to just, like, precision, in, in a precision way, get in there and apply the highlights I need. Uh, as a point of fact, you'll see as we rotate the miniature around in just a moment here, uh, you can see how I'll just focus in very small on that knee area and I'll miss the other sides and I can just build that tiny, tiny area up. Last test here, glazing. 
Uh, a very important thing to do with your airbrush because it's so much easier than the brush. Yet again, the Master G23 does it just fine. Uh, the difference is the spray pattern is going to be wider. So I'm going to be limited when I'm working with my miniatures on the areas I can glaze. But when I'm dealing with an ogre or something like this, a vehicle, it's going to be just fine. For these smaller areas or when I need more precision, that's when it's time to where the, something like the Iwata really shines. Here, I can just very gently, because of the nature of how I have the trigger control, build this up much more softly than I did on the back. I can also f hone it in a lot better on particular small areas. So as I move up to, say, his forehead or under his knuckles or something like that, I just have a better level of control. Uh, for the chrome, we're going to actually do the skin transition for that in the infinity. So here we're using sort of a mid-tone yellowy color to smooth out the skin. But you'll notice again that I am able to be quite precise. Uh, as I move around the, the miniature, I'm able to hit just the areas I want. Uh, get in there, you know, I'm going to do the, hit these two back muscles, and you can see how I can be very, very small and precise. Now, part of this is because of the trigger control, and part of this is working in those thin layers, as I've mentioned in previous videos. The key of uh, Kiev, sorry, here, once again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, is going to, once again, just really outpace the others to some degree, because I can be so precise down to these very tiny muscle structures, getting in there and hitting like just the thumb or individual fingers or stuff like that. Uh, it really does have a, a level of control that the other ones don't. Uh, and part of that is the needle and part of that is the precision of the trigger. As a proof point of that, let's see just how precise we can get. Let's do something I would never actually do with an airbrush. Let's paint it just his belt. So we're gonna turn just his belt black. And as you can see, with the infinity, I'm able to get in there and just do the belt. Uh, I'm not overspraying onto the pants. I'm not overspraying onto uh, the skin above it or anything like that. Uh, I can do the bracer here. And you can see no, no overspray onto the rest of the, uh, the figure. Um, that level of precision is something you're really only going to get out of the, the, the higher end airbrush, something like this Infinity. All right, so the Master G23. Very cheap airbrush, easy, dime a dozen. As you could see, I was still able to do most of the tasks I needed to do with it. However, realistically, this airbrush is best if you're looking for something cheap to get in, to get going. You can prime, you can base coat, you can do all the things you need to do. It's really more about learning the tool and how to use it than it is about the quality of the tool. That being said, it's a lot heavier than the others uh, just because of the nature of how it's constructed. That makes it just harder and more tiring to use in your hand and you know to balance on your fingers. It also doesn't have the precision machining that a lot of the other ones have. So the parts don't fit as well together and you may have to spend more time sort of futzing around with it to get it to perform where you want. But if you're just looking for something that's going to help you get vehicles done, get your priming regardless of the season, there's no reason something like a simple master airbrush like this, which is, you know, very little money comparatively, uh, let that be an excellent entry into the world of airbrushing for you. Absolutely no shame in it. It's a great choice. Next up, the Badger. Now, Badger makes many different airbrushes. Uh, this, of course, that I was showing you here has been the Chrome. Uh, there are a lot of differences in the various uh, Badger products, but they're all high quality products. You know, they're all made here in the USA, uh, where I am right now, and they all deliver uh, a good, solid performance. As you can see, I was able to do many tasks, even down to quite precise work with them without any trouble. Again, this is a pretty heavy airbrush. The body and what it's manufactured out of is pretty, pretty dense, meaning that it is going to be heavy in your hand. Now it does have, especially the chrome, uh, a much nicer grip in this rubber grip that you can sort of hold on to. That is a nice small feature. It's a, it's a little thing, but trust me, after hours of airbrushing, it really does matter. This, especially the chrome, but really most of the Badger line, does have a lot higher level of quality machining uh, than you see out of some of the cheaper brands that are out there. Badger I find to be a really nice airbrush at a very competitive price. Absolutely nothing wrong with these. If you uh, get a chance to, to pick one of these up, I, there's, it, it can absolutely be a, an all-purpose airbrush for you, doing everything you need from priming and base coating, detail work, glazing, the whole shooting match as you, were, as you saw, I was able to do all of it, no problem with it. 
they're good solid airbrushes. The only thing that you have to remember is that they do have that different connector tip by default, so you have to get the little converter uh, for your quick change to make sure that it can, you know, be swapped out with any other airbrushes you have and connect to standard hoses. Okay, Iwata. Now, the Iwata HPCS has been my workhorse airbrush uh, for more than eight years. In fact, this particular airbrush has been used for a good seven years of that time. And I've used it for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, thousands of miniatures. Uh, I really do think it's a fantastic airbrush. It's durable, it is solid, it is also heavy, um, but it's nice. Again, very high quality machining, very precision control. You can, uh, you know, remove the needle guard if you want to be careful and actually get some pretty precise and tight lines out of it. Uh, so all in all, this is a performant airbrush. Now, from the HPCS, I also showed you a little bit of the High Line, which is sort of the next step up. There are Iwatas above that as well. All of them give you the ability to have that different needle and housing and just focus, focus, focus in and get those really, really tight, really, really precise, really fine lines. If you're looking to spend some money on an airbrush, Iwata can be an excellent choice for your upgrade. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. These are super high quality airbrushes, well supported, and you can uh, get the parts from many U.S. retailers if you're here in the United States. But if you're other places in the world, the, the parts are generally pretty widely available, which is good. The Grex. Now, this is actually the heaviest in the hand of all of them, even heavier than the, the Master. That's one of the reasons I don't like it. I also just find it doesn't really respond as precisely as I would like. I was able to do most tasks with this airbrush, uh, and Grex has several different airbrushes in their line. Again, I'm just looking at one of them here. Uh, but overall, I found this one to be probably the mo most underwhelming. It does have some nice features that I like. Um, it has the standard lock for the trigger, so you can't pull back too far. I do like that it has the removable cup, which is a nice feature that makes it much easier to clean. Uh, and it's not a bad airbrush by any stretch of the imagination. I've just found that over time it was a little more finicky and a little more trouble and wasn't producing the quality results that I really wanted. So overall, a nice airbrush, uh, but certainly probably not where I would spend my money if I had the choice between everything I've reviewed here. Last up, the Infinity. The Infinity from Harder and Steinbeck. Uh, I showed two different versions here, both the Infinity Kiev and the Infinity CR+. Plus. Uh, I will be honest, these have become my go-to favorite airbrushes. I truly, truly love uh, Harder and Steinbeck and, and the products they produce. Uh, not only was this an amazing airbrush for charity I covered in detail some time ago uh, that went to uh, relief for victims of the war in Ukraine, but also with uh, all of the Harder and Steinbeck products, I find that they have just the highest quality of precision machining. Everything on this thing, on this airbrush, is designed with absolute utter care and a desire for perfection in action. Uh, from the quick change or the, the quick reset on the back uh, of your, your airbrush here to just the precision control of the trigger, uh, the way the needle moves, the way it sort of floats inside the actual housing. And moreover, because the Infinity Kiev here has an aluminum body, it is so lightweight in the hand. This thing's like barely heavier than a pencil. It's just incredible. You can use it forever. You can do really, really, really precise lines. Uh, with the 0.2 or the 0.15 needle, um, this one currently has the 0.2 housing in it, uh, my CR Plus has the 0.15 housing in it, you really can be a surgeon with these airbrushes, just getting the tightest, finest lines. Uh, and just it, that's not just because of the size of the needle, as I mentioned earlier. You know, the ultimate difference between 0.2 millimeters and 0.3 millimeters is not really that large. Uh, but... There, the difference in the precision of the control and how much you can really just, just touch that trigger, this excels above all the rest. But these are expensive. The CR Plus and the Infinities in general, they're not a cheap airbrush. Now, they're not a, you know, a car or anything, let's be realistic here, but they are a sizable investment. If you're looking to take your airbrushing to a point where you're doing really fine detail work with your airbrush, where you can be a surgeon, then these are absolutely worth the investment. And hey, in the case of the Infinity Kiev, your money goes to an excellent cause. So uh, all around All right, great. so that's all the airbrushes. As you can see, uh, most of these airbrushes really will perform for you. Once you sort of get above uh, $100 here in the US, and you get into that level of airbrushing, 
you're able to do most tasks you want to do. It's more about practice and learning with the tool than it is about the tool itself. That being said, when you're trying to do really fine, precision, high-end work with it, that's where the quality of the tool comes into play. If you're painting your miniatures and you're just looking for a good workhorse to prime, to do some base coats, maybe some simple glazing or environmental lighting, then more or less any of these airbrushes are going to work with you and you can make your purchase with confidence based on what's available in your area, your geography, your region in the world. However, if you're looking for something that really does provide the super highest quality, for me, it has to be the Harder and Steinbeck with the Iwata coming a close second. Both are tremendously good brands making extremely high quality airbrushes, and I don't think you can go wrong with either choice. I have put hundreds of hours into both of them and been incredibly pleased with both products. Now, that being said, the Harder and Steinbeck has become my new favorite just because of how much I'm able to control it as I've started moving into doing more delicate and fine work. I really hope this helped you make a decision with your airbrushing and what to purchase. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions, drop those down in the comments below. Is there something I didn't answer uh, about airbrushing that you wanted to know uh, or about these airbrush brands? Happy to respond to all comments down below. If you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon where you can do so. It's focused on you taking your next step on your hobby journey. You can find the link for that down below. Uh, as always, though, I thank you so much for watching. And as always, We'll see you next time.